Well, hello, Christ United Methodist Church, friends and family. Pastor Jeremiah coming to you with this week's Upper Room devotional. And our devotional is titled Beauty in the Details, and it comes from Stephen Paul Simmons from Texas, USA. And I couldn't think of a better one this week as I'm thinking about all the things that we try and do and accomplish in our life. More specifically, thinking about how many times I've tried really hard to do something, and when I'm done, it just doesn't measure up. Perhaps like the idea of moving videos or whatever else. You know, we, we want to try and do new things and we try and cross all of our T's and dot our I's and whatever we do just doesn't seem to measure up. Or like our uh, author today kind of points out about uh, a drawing that they received and how often little kids will draw something and, you know, they think it looks great and you look at it and it's just a bunch of circles and squares and you know, it doesn't look that great. And when you compare it to other artists, um, it really isn't that great at all. And I have four children at home right now, and I can remember each of them as they were little drawing pictures for me. And I thought they were the most beautiful things in the world. In fact, one of the pictures um, that my son Jacob drew for me um, really stuck out to me. He was very, very young, and he was just circles and basic squares and I'm going to show it to you here now and kind of talk to you to see if this works again as we're looking here there's my son's picture and if you notice it is just some real simple shapes and they're even signed it over here in the corner for me it's real simple shapes circles squares and lines and if you look really closely there's a happy dad next to a happy son. And at the most basic level, it's us together. And he's thinking about how much we love each other. It's beautiful to me. I have it framed, it sits in my office. And at his young age, he was communicating something profound and simple yet very deeply complex. The fact that he knew his dad loved him. And when he gave that picture to me, I needed that. He wasn't very verbal when he was younger, but he drew that picture thinking about me and how happy he is when we're together. And it reminds me all the time of how simple we are when we try and express our love for those around us. And more specifically, it puts me in the mind of how simple we must look to God in the things that we do when we try and show love for him when we try and do good in this world and we mess it all up and we, we, we think we're doing the right thing and then we're just screwing that up and how we think sometimes we're doing things for God and really we're not even doing the things God would want us to do. We've got all kinds of real simple shapes and ideas and, and things that we think are one thing and just aren't really. And yet God sees our heart. God knows our intent. God loves us. In fact, there was a, um, a saying that I remember that God has all of our pictures on his refrigerator. That <laughs> what we do is beautiful and our intent and what we're trying to do is what God takes notice of. And on some level, that's what Jesus does for each and every one of us. You see, Jesus covers up all of our mistakes and simplicities and when God looks at us, he sees nothing but perfection. He sees Christ in each and every one of us. Not our typical self or our screw-ups or our, our shortcomings, but instead the beauty that lies just beyond. And so whenever you're trying your best to do what God has called you to do, know that God is filling in those gaps. That God is with you in the midst of all of our garbage and simplicity in the midst of all of the things that we are screwing up god is moving and acting and moving in toward moving all those things that we do for his good and as simple or tragic as it might seem or as basic as our actions are or as simplistic as they may look like my son's drawing may have been, when it's all said and done, God sees our best intent.
God loves us. And that gets lost so frequently, I think. We, we kind of think of God as the big cosmic cop up in the sky trying to catch us breaking some sort of cosmic speed limit so he could punish us and sentence us or ground us to our spaces or send us to hell or something. When in reality, God is up there with a heart wider and bigger than we can ever imagine and looks at us and sees divine daughters and sons worth dying for. That's the story of God's love. In fact, God's message, the good news, that gospel is nothing but love. And so you do the best you can. Don't think about whether or not your skill at doing art or doing God's call or being a disciple on a journey doesn't measure up to somebody else's. Instead, do the best you can and make your life a picture of your love for God. Do the things that you can Offer what you can to God and let God reinterpret it for you. Let him see the best that you can make and let him fill the gaps or the differences. It's a real beautiful thing when we let go of our attachments, when we let go of the things that we expect, and we just kind of trust for God to love us unconditionally. It really takes this walk with Christ and makes it something much easier to accomplish. Instead of us trying to follow all the rules and, and cross all the T's and dot all the I's and, and do it on our own, we can just let go and say, God, I love you. Here's my picture. And let your picture be your life. And as simple or as basic as it may be, know that it's beautiful to God as long as you've given your best. All right, let's look at our devotional. Since I've been in prison, my daughter has sent me several drawings one of my favorites is a self-portrait she drew when she was four years old. To anyone else, it probably looks like a bunch of shapes, circles, triangles, ovals, and squares that she assembled to form a human body. But I notice much more detail. Pupils and irises in the eyes, eyelashes, tennis shoes, a pretty red triangle dress, and black rectangle lights. To my eyes, it's better than the Mona Lisa, and I treasure her drawing. Likewise, we have a Heavenly Father who looks at our small daily actions and is pleased when we reflect Him there. After all, it's the small details that can make a huge difference in someone's day. Shaking someone's hand, speaking an encouraging word, saying hello to someone, each of these can brighten another person's life in ways we may never know. We can all take time today to show kindness to someone in small ways. By doing so, we bring glory to God who notices and cares about the details in our lives. It is so true. The simplest things, a smile, a hello, a how you doing, just being present and saying, I see you. Trying to brighten someone's day or give a hug when you can, all of those things mean the world to God and reveal a love that is unconditional. And we represent and represent Christ when we do those things. We become God's hands and feet. And so if we see somebody who thinks maybe, you know, God needs to show up or we wish somebody would do something, maybe that somebody's you. And you can make all the world of difference for somebody. You know, it reminds me of something I just did the other day. And I, I share this story because, not to edify myself, but I was driving home and uh, I saw somebody standing off the side of the road um, outside the console mart. And he was standing there with a sign that said War Vet. And he had the, his uh, Vietnam War Veterans hat on. And he was standing out there. And he wasn't even, it didn't even say anything on there other than veteran. And I had the ability and the time and the whisper. I was going to just drive by. More often than not, I do. I wave at people. I, I show them that I see them. But something told me to do something more. So I pulled into the console mart. And I got some chicken and uh, a big bottle of water and some wedge fries. And I had them made specially for this guy. And I packed them up in the bag and I took them over. I shook his hand and I said, I thank you for your service. And I handed him the chicken and the wedge fries. He had tears in his eyes. He couldn't believe that I had showed up. He said, this is gonna be a great afternoon. He said he was so hungry and so appreciative. And we stood there and talked for a little bit and I got to know him a little bit better. And then I left. It was a simple act. It was like 11 bucks. 
to buy the food and the water, which is maybe a little bit more than I would normally spend on some chicken, but it was available and close. And in the reality of it was, he felt seen. Who knows how many people drove by and didn't see him. Who knows how many days he had stood there. But this day, somebody showed up with some food. And maybe I was an answer to his prayers. And maybe he was an answer to mine. Because I felt closer and more connected to humanity in the act. And it may have nothing to do with him. Maybe he was serving me and standing there and allowing me to serve him. It's simple things that change the world. Might have been the first hot meal he's had in a few days. Who knows? All I know is it was a blessing to me to be able to thank somebody for his service to me. In fact, he served in the Vietnam War, which existed before I was even born. And so on some level, I was paying back something to him that he had done for me without even knowing me, which is fighting for my freedoms in one way, shape, or form or another. Regardless of your political stance or whether you think about um, what war was or what our politics are around any specific issue, when people serve our country and they serve us, they too are doing a simple act. They're just offering themselves to us the same way Christ offered himself up for us. And so I encourage you, maybe not necessarily to stop and get food and go talk to a stranger on the side of the road, but to do what you can where you can. Claim the ground under your feet as kingdom ground for God's kingdom way. And make a difference right with the people right in front of you. It can change everything. I'll leave that with you tonight in Christ's name. Amen. And our uh, prayer focus today is to focus on people who are stuck in prison. And this is another area where we often kind of in our society overlook the need and the pain and the suffering that exists. I just lost a friend to an overdose who spent two years in prison and we talked all the time, in fact, once or twice a week, and it was hard in there for him. And he maybe have done stuff, things that he deserved to be fit doing some time. He had some anger issues and made several mistakes that landed him in jail, but that didn't mean that he was forgotten while he was in jail. It didn't mean that he deserved some of the treatment that he got there, the lack of access to health care and the lack of access to care and concern and the lack of access to proper food. I mean, you don't really get three hots and a cots in jail. And more often than not, it's more dangerous to be in jail than it is not to be. And so it's a hard place to be. And yes, some people do need to serve some time, but to raise some awareness around the issues that exist for these people who are in prison and forgotten and oftentimes feel lonely and isolated and forgotten. I talked to him once or twice a week and helped him find some hope in the midst of all the, the darkness of his life. And during those times, I learned a lot about the best of who he was. He tried. He had mental health issues. He had an addiction issue. He had issues that our society oftentimes is unable to help him with, and more often than not, unforgiving and how we deal with it, we just think people can make better choices. And we, we kind of say, well, if you wouldn't have done this, then you wouldn't be in jail. And on some level, there is some truth to that. But when you're dealing with mental health and addiction, more often than not, you try your best, but you just can't break these cycles and patterns. Or you can't get past the childhood trauma that you endured. And so you're just broken. And we need to do better as a society and as individuals, finding grace for people, finding alternative ways to serve justice. So pray for those people in jail. Don't just think they're there and they deserve it and we can forget them. And that was kind of the point of this uh, um, Mr. Simmons' uh, um, devotion tonight is to raise some awareness. And so I wanted to not lose track of that as well, especially given my most recent um, loss of my friend Kenny. So um, keep those things in mind. That's the small things we do that make a difference. And even if it's just finding grace for somebody we don't even know and, and not hitting send on a post that maybe minimizes somebody's uh, experience, or maybe it's just waiting and holding our opinions and learning a little bit more. Maybe it's opening the door for a stranger. Maybe it's a simple thing. Each one of these things becomes a beautiful piece of art to God. And so be those hands and feet. 
make the changes you can where you can. And uh, let's pray. Dear God, help us to show kindness to everyone we meet, whether it's today, tomorrow, the rest of our lives. Help us to be those who are kind, who are ambassadors of your love in the world, that when people would see us, they would rejoice and experience the good news, the gospel of who you are in and through us. In your gracious and holy name we pray. Amen. Well, have a good day, and we'll see you next week.